what's going on boys welcome back to the channel we have something different we have a breakdown of one of the greatest muay thai fighters ever in the history of the sport rotang rotang is taking on super lake this friday september 22nd in thailand at the lupini stadium he is fighting another badass super lake so Ladies and gentlemen, I told you this channel, we're not just gonna be breaking down UFC stuff, we're gonna break down one championship, PFL, Bellator, whatever fight that gets me excited, I'm breaking it down. We're gonna watch the second fight against Jonathan Haggerty versus Rotang 2. This was an absolute banger. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, subscribe. Also, hit the bell to know we go live. Let's give it a watch, boys. All right, boys. This is the pinnacle of stand up. Like, like, you're not going to get better stand-up anywhere in the world than these guys right here. Okay. Already, already you see huge uh, height difference. You know, John Haggerty has the the height difference. Uh, but Rotting does such a good job of keep, keeping constant pressure, right? So if you look at, uh, if you look right here, Okay, a little eye poke. It's all good. I, I want to talk about distance. Uh, this is a lot of things we talk about in watching MMA fights, right? But lo look look at the distance they have between each other. This distance never gets broken whatsoever. Rotten keeps this distance the whole entire time between each other. He keeps this distance. The reason why he keeps this distance is that he can block effectively he can see everything coming and it also gives him enough opportunity to be able to get to john haggerty if he needs to right he always keeps this distance the whole entire time the whole entire time that's what makes him so damn effective but a lot of people think that's not going to work when he fights super lake i disagree i think it's something that rotting is so good at that it's built into his his dna when he fights Look at that distance right there. Beautiful X, beautiful X block. Everything he does, there's not a lot of motion to it. He's just very, very calm and stays there. And controls distance very well too. Beautiful body shot. He goes low. And look, he goes right back to that distance. Right back there. And if, if this is your guys' first time watching Rod Tank, you guys are in for a treat. He drops John Haggerty to the body with a beautiful counter left to the body and he goes so he did a good job of catching the kick john haggerty teeps he teeps he's super close in that distance that we just uh established super close let's go of it look at that body shot right here that's open this body shot right here is super open for him to counter right there okay i'm gonna fast forward a little bit Boom, lands that shot. Nasty shot. And puts Haggerty down. <laughs> the double spin though. And to give Haggerty uh, credit, he is he's sucking a lot of weight to get down to this weight class. This is 135 where I fight. He is a natural 145er. So he was making his weight class killing himself so his body wasn't as strong as it is now at 145 but he gets dropped by rotting rotting with a beautiful catch the teeth and goes back down with a left uh to the liver all right there look at that distance rotting's going right back there back to the teeth nice leg kick but see, that's what makes Rotang so dangerous is him staying right at that edge of the distance. With him being a shorter fighter, it's perfect. And look how he walks right to the edge of that distance every single time. Nice movement. And look where their hands are at. Their hands are here, right here. Not here, here. Then again, this is Muay Thai. But when you look at Muay Thai, you want to fight. My personal opinion, I want to fight like a Muay Thai fighter when I do an MMA because the striking is clean. Granted, they don't have the best takedown defense, but the striking is so damn clean. It's like, it's beautiful to watch.
Changing leg kicks. Now here's the come to clinch game. That's the one thing I would say in uh in one championship uh is let them fight in the clinch just just let them fight in the clinch because it is muay thai give them opportunity to actually fight for the clinch and let somebody dominate the the muay thai plum and typically in muay thai fights the first round is is is, is slow but these guys have fight each other already so he's just taking it to him but rotten keeps on going for that body shot he dropped them once and he's going for it Woof. Look, Rotting's still walking him down. Walking across distance. Walking. Not rushing. He's just walking across distance. Nice check inside. Another teep. Nice body shot again. And Haggerty is no joke. Haggerty is... Woof. But you look, every single time when you're in this stance right here, when you're in that stance right there, you're in a position where you can fire back immediately, right? That's that's one of the things about kickboxing. It's like, let's take a look at the slow motion. He throws that teep. He catches it. As he catches it, look what he's going to do. He's going right there ready for that body shot. Now, right now, John Haggerty, he's blind. Remember we talked about this in the past? When somebody goes like this, you, they really can't see what's coming. So that's the shot that hurts the worst is the one that you don't see coming. And this one just lands in a beautiful placement for Rotting into the liver. And John Haggerty goes down from that. Gets kicked in the face again, catches it, and look at a different angle right here. Jeez. Beautiful placement. Look at the grimace on his face, man. Yeah, like this is the the highest level of of kick of Muay Thai you're gonna see. Uh, and, you know, John Haggerty he has a fight coming up against Fabricio Andraj. They're fighting for the kickboxing belt in one championship. I believe they're doing that with uh, eight ounce gloves, so actually kickboxing gloves. But in one championship, they do Muay Thai fights and kickboxing fights in MMA gloves. So a lot of you guys out there who hate grappling, you always say, "Stand him up, stand him up, Bobby." You can watch you you can watch Muay Thai and kickboxing and I guarantee you'll be very happy. All right, round two. Right there. Look at that distance. There's that distance again. Same distance. Rotten just sits there. He sits there and lives there and waits for you to overextend or give him something to catch to be able to cross distance with a body shot or right hand. Nice sashay. Oh, Haggerty switches southpaw. He didn't do that the first fight. So another knee body kick. The back body kick, it's good. Now, uh, he went back to orthodox. Nice. And one of the things with Rotting, he has a chin. He will exchange to give one. To, he'll take one to give two. Because he knows his chin's going to last. So that's why he he he's not worried about coming close distance. That's why everybody says he's in trouble when he fights Super Lake. Because Subic is going to be able to hurt him. But I just don't think that's going to happen. Right here. Lot more. See right here? Allow him to fight for the clinch. Allow him. Give him like 30 seconds. Even though the rounds are only three minutes, give him 30 seconds. They're actually going to fight a little bit in the clinch. But they're not really trying to fight for the plum. They're just tying each other up and trying to get little knees in there. Not offsetting. Not off, you know, balancing each other. And right now, Haggerty's trying to find an opportunity to get in there. He can't really cross the distance. He He's trying to cross a little bit, but he's always keeping a distance with that long jab. But it's very hard for somebody who's good about just walking. Nice. X block. You look, Rotang's looking to catch that foot again. <laughs> Another body kick. Hey, a little athletic ability there. Yep, Rodden just does such a good job of not wasting much movement whatsoever. When he when he counters, when he blocks, not wasting movement whatsoever. Another body kick catches that kick. 
Remember, he loves catching that kick because that gives him the opportunity to cross the distance without getting hit. Block that. And see, the hardest thing, like, the, uh, there's no, I, I don't know what pointers I would give John Haggerty because he, ooh, nice right hand by Haggerty. But Roxing ate it. <laughs> nice, another right hand from Haggerty. Let's see, right when, right when Rock Tank feels that his opponent is starting to get to beat him, he shuts it down, he closes the distance, gets into the clinch game, and takes away that, that momentum that his opponents are starting to bring into the fight, or starting to gain in the fight. Oi! Three round fights. Three round, uh, excuse me, not three round fights, three minute fights. It, it's it's constant action. When you're fighting Rod Saint, let's take a look at the slow motion right here. Beautiful body kick. He catches it. So when he catches it, he still eats that kick, right? He still he still eats that kick. Catches it. Typically, you're gonna go for a sweep of Muay Thai. He goes up. Rod Saint goes, not today. Ah, ah, ah. Jumps up using the athletic ability while keeping his balance and landing that foot. Right? Like, I think Rotting is the best Muay Thai fighter in the world at 125, 135 pounds. Like, the, the ability he, how fast he moves, how hard he hits, his chin. I mean, a lot of people, you know, it, it's part of the game. It's one of your gifts. If you have a hard chin and you know how to utilize it, use it. Because I, I was there live front row when Haggerty kicked him in the neck and he went like this. All right, round three. I think this is the end of the fight right here. Look at that distance. Same distance between each other, right? I made this uh, beginning of the fight. Look at that distance. Again, the distance from each other is staying the same. He comes to this distance and he lives and he eats and breathes here. He's living here rent free. I mean, he has to pay a couple of taxes and a couple of mortgage here and there, but for the most part, he is living rent free when he is in that position. So that's one of the things I think he's gonna be able to take advantage of Super Lake. I don't think Super Lake's ever fought someone who stands right in front of them and exchanges like Rotting does. And Haggerty's just doing his best to keep him off, keep him from progressing. So maybe Haggerty could start throwing flying knees, you know, throwing flying knees, but you know, that's a risk you have to take. It's a risk you you should be willing to take when you fight Rotting. Rotting's just trying to get to him. And in a cage, here's the difference. I know a lot of you viewers are so used to the UFC, which is the octagon. The octagon has eight sides, so you really it's very hard to cut somebody down. They can always run around and escape. In a ring is probably one of my favorite things to watch uh, MMA in. In Pride, Dream, and One Championship. Uh, rising they have the ring the ring has four corners so it favors the striker more because you're able to actually corner somebody and let your hands go and as opposed to being an octagon he's just trying to get to him and he's eating a lot of shots to get there to him too but none of the shots land flush Look at them. I love, that's one thing I love about the MMA tech guys. They keep that distance. They just keep going forward. And, and uh, not Haggerty, but Rodson just walks you down and doesn't care. He did the same thing when I fought him. <laughs> he just walked across this and punched me in the face. I'm going to the body. Could be eye poke. I would have to see a replay, slow motion, and see what happened. Let's see. I think it was an eye poke. Could be an eye poke or could have been a headbutt. Not sure. Let's see. He throws that body punch. Oh, yeah. That was an eye poke. Put his thumb right in the left thumb in his eye. 
Come on, Cameron. What the hell are you doing? You poked him in an eye rod, Tank. Give the man his five minutes to recover, dog. Come on now. Rod Tang is a good showsman too. He's trying to get the crowd and Bob like, come on, man, come on. You ready to fight or not? Accident mistake, it happens, right? You have the open, you have the open hand gloves, you're pushing each other, pushing them back. But the whole time, Rod Tang knows once he gets close to Haggerty, he's gonna shell up. Ooh, Rod Tang got hit with the right hand, doesn't care. Another buy shot. Oh. Boy, 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 boy. Like, that's the difference between a ring and a, and, and a cage in circles that you can get somebody in the corner, then you can just unload on them, right? And that's what Rod Tang did there. He got him into the corner, and then he was like, boom, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plant my feet, and I'm just gonna let my hands go. Ryan Garcia wouldn't have got up. <laughs> boom, right there. Throws that, and that, that teat just landed. Like, these guys, they bang, dude. They, like, you're, you're not going to find, like, I'm telling you guys right now, you're not going to find any type of stand-up artist around the world who fight like this. His mouthpiece drops, and he was still banging. He doesn't care. Look, walking him down. He wants to get there. He wants to get there. He wants to get there. Bop. And Rod Tang tells you, come on, fight. Stop running away. Stop running away. Ate that one, too. Ate it. Like I said, if he can do this to Super Lake, I don't think Super Lake is going to have... I don't think Super Lake is going to be able to do anything to do. Nobody can withstand that type of pressure and that type of power. Like, he comes forward nonstop. Get up, John Haggerty. You're a beast. You know it. Like Haggerty is like, what else do you need? Ooh, that body shot landed. And it's it's three, it's a three knockdown roll. If you drop somebody three times, she's like unboxing, that's game. But ladies and gentlemen, like if you you guys have the opportunity to watch Rod Tang fight Super Lake for free on the One Championship app. Now, I love watching Rod Tang. He's one of my favorite fighters under the One Championship banner. Probably, you know. If he had a legit background in wrestling jiu-jitsu, he could probably be probably top 10 in MMA in the world just because his stand-up so good. But, you know, he's got a lot of work to do in the grappling and the, the wrestling. But, boys, that is a breakdown of Rod Tain. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, subscribe. Also, hit the bell to know we go live, and we will catch you at the next one.